All right, guys, we're talking the 105 tonight. As always, let's get in some trades to get a baseline. Are you going the 105 or Tyreek Hill? And this is a 12 team super flex PPR start 10. Damn. Start wanna... 10, I'd, I'd be okay taking Tyreek Hill in a start 10. I'd be okay with it. I don't, I don't want to take Tyreek Hill, but I'd probably take Tyreek Hill. The 105 or Daniel Jones and the 111. I mean, listen, if you're sitting at the 105 and you're going, man, I'm hoping the X quarterback falls to me and you don't want to risk that X quarterback falls to you, I can see taking this and still knowing you're going to get a pretty good profile at 111, especially if it's a league where you think you might be able to flip at 111 for a 24 first. Maybe you have to add a little piece, but if you can get that done, all of a sudden you're looking, man, at 105, but I'm getting a 24 first and Daniel Jones. Like I'm taking that side probably. If I think it's an active league that'll play ball. I don't, I don't want to take Daniel Jones. So Daniel Jones in the 111, just doing some quick math using calculators in my head, is actually uh, equal to the 107. So it comes out yeah. less than the 105. So I'm going to take the 105, and I'm going to draft Scott's dude, uh, Anthony Richardson there, who's my na- new favorite pick at 105, and bet on his upside over um, Vanilla Vic's uh, career year when he was the QB, what, 9 last year? QB 10, something like that. Yeah. Career year when everything went right for him. How about in a one QB, the 105 or Michael Pittman? Hmm. It's the sex appeal. It's the sex appeal of the pick. I'll go with the pick. Yes. I'll go with the pick. It's fair value with with Michael Pittman, but it's uh, the fact that it's a flexible pick is why you'd go pick. Literally no sex appeal to Michael Pittman. There's nothing nothing at all that makes it move. The 105, yeah, it moves a little bit at least. So I'm going to get the 105. Yeah, Pittman's probably just another Terry McLaurin that is going to get paid. And he's probably a wide receiver two, wide receiver three. He's good, but I don't think he's ever going to get to a level where you need to have him on your roster for the asset. Whereas if you just do the math 105, you're getting one of the top three receivers, which even if they're not the top three receivers off the board, they're the top three that probably people like, and then Gibbs and Bijan. So you're kind of at the end of the perceived market tier right there so I'd, I'd rather have that than Pittman. 107 106 even you could sell me on mm-hmm. okay i'm getting a guy that i know i can put in my lineup versus jalen hyatt or zach charbonnet something like that so i think that's the breaking point in a one qb josh jacobs or the 105 same thing pick same thing pick yeah you're gonna get a four-year age discount at the running back position so if you end up drafting a, a running back, you're you're rebooting on the age, not losing hopefully too much production wise. Yep. RB one. Yeah, I mean, I think it comes down to you know your roster too, because there's a lot of teams where if you have enough running backs, you're probably already trying to get a receiver for a guy like Josh Jacobs. This is just a way to kind of bridge the gap to that. Like you're not getting a receiver, but you're getting a pick that you probably are confident you can turn into a receiver. And mm-hmm. let's be real, in one QB, you're not gonna see probably Gibbs if he's the RB2. I think Charbonnet has a chance to be the RB2, but that's it. And if either one of those guys is the clear-cut RB2, you're not getting him at 105. Someone's going to take him and go, man, I've been punting running back for three years. I've been listening to Scott and Shane. They've told me to sell every one of them, and now I have the 103. I'm not passing on you know, first-round Jameer Gibbs. No way. So you're just not getting him at 105 most leagues. So we're going to do a bunch more uh, trades throughout the show, I imagine. But let's let's do one more super flex one here real quick. Travis Kelsey or the 105? 105. Is this 1.5 need a hammer. Shane. Yeah, Shane, well, you need a hammer. Well, I, I'm surprised he was. I am surprised he answered yeah. that before you even could finish the question. I don't like old people. I don't like old people in Dynasty. And now that I had time to think about it, I'm not even taking Tyreek Hill for the 105. I'm taking the 105. I'd probably take Tyreek Hill. That said, if I got a bunch of other smattering of firsts, uh, I'm fine with paying the 105 for Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey. So that brings up an interesting element in Dynasty because I think everything Shane just said is true, but I don't think it's been true for years. I think this is kind of the new age of Dynasty player that clearly is starting to understand that in February and March, there is almost no players that you would say are 28 or older that are even close to the value of a top five or top six pick wherever you would consider the 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 high end tier break to be how many players over the age of 28 are people going to go give me that guy over this pick like you're just not going to see it there's going to be some people that go i don't care about picks 
I don't care if it's the 104, the 106, give me proven production. But I think largely it's not just, oh, hey, I have Travis Kelsey, Kelsey in every league I have him. I can just go trade him and get a high first. I have Tyree Kill, Stefan Diggs. I can just go get a top three or four pick for him. Like I think those days are gone, but that doesn't mean they're not worth the pick. It's almost just like if I have to pick, Shane and I are probably in most cases going to say, okay, give me the pick. But there's also leagues where you're like, I just need to make a move. You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in 30 leagues. I'm sick of drafting 104s, 105s, 106s. So let me just go get a player because it fits this need. So I don't want to dismiss it, but it just feels like this is just the new extreme in Dynasty where picks are even more king at this time as they should be. But it doesn't mean everyone should just go, man, I really, really need a running back. And someone's willing to trade me Saquon Barkley for the 105 or 104. And I'm just not going to do it because they said never pay for a guy that's on the back half of his career. So there is context to it. But generally, I think it's just a really strong sentiment that you want picks and that's it. And here's part of my problem with this, right, is that people that do the whole, well, I'm going to send the 105 for Tyree Kill and Kelsey usually can't stop there, right? They can't stop themselves. It's like a compulsion. They go, well, I'm going to trade every one of my picks for an old player. And you're like, all right, I mean, that's great. Your roster is going to be freaking stacked for a year. And then everyone's going to age out and you're just left with an orphan that you dusted and left behind. Starting bad habits when I start buying 34-year-old tight ends for early draft round capital. So let's talk about the the 105 in particular. Scott, what are your thoughts on this on this pick? Well, we already laid out some good trades with this pick. And it is one of those picks where we already did the 102, the 103, the 104. We talked through kind of the process of you're in the leverage spot in those positions where, especially 102 and 103, I think you're going to have, essentially, you're going to have the piece that runs the entire board. Now you still have a piece that could run part of the draft because if you're talking quarterbacks, even if three quarterbacks go off the board in front of you, there's still going to be probably a fourth that's there. Now you don't want to pick the fourth quarterback, probably because that's a quarterback a lot of people go, I don't really want or I don't really like. So it doesn't mean you just take him, but at least the option is there. You're within the tier, probably most drafts. It's not going to go Bijan, QB, QB, QB. Like there's probably going to be likely Richardson available, or maybe Bryce Young, depending on where he goes, what he measures in, all that stuff. Let's just assume two quarterbacks are gone at the 105. I still have some options. I have somebody that might want a quarterback that can come up and get that pick. If we see two quarterbacks and Bijan go, if the 104 goes wide receiver because the team there is just scared of taking running backs, guess what? You're going to have the option to have a running back on the board, the 102, whoever that running back is, whoever the RB2 is. And then receivers, you know if there's going to be, right now there's a tier of like three top receivers, but you know there's going to be a multitude of receivers that were drafted high in the NFL draft available. So even though this pick may not address your needs, we get a lot of questions. Hey, I have the 105 and the 106, but here's what I need. Well, if you need a running back, it's not guaranteed that the running back on the board there at the 105 is going to be where you should go. But if it's not running back, there's a really good chance someone wants a receiver, someone wants a quarterback. And I think receivers and quarterbacks being available make draft picks more liquid because those are at least assets you can take and not be forced to have to use right away. So I think that's why this pick is still valuable. It's way more valuable than the 107. 106 is going to be right on the fringe. Once you start getting into the later first, at least right now, those feel like picks. If I'm holding the 109 or 110 right now, most likely I'm looking at the profile that I can get And I'm like, man, I have that already locked up. I'm getting a first round receiver. I'm getting the RB3. I'm getting the the QB4. The market goes, I don't even want the 110. Mm -hmm. Because I think Will Levis sucks. I think the receivers outside of the top two or three stink. I don't know who the RB3 is, so I'm fading it. So I'm not valuing the 110 or 111. I think that's the biggest difference is this pick is still in that range where you're going to be able to leverage it for some market value based on scarcity at other positions. Okay, so Shane, let's say 101 went Bijan, 102 went CJ Stroud, 103 went Bryce Young, 104 went Anthony Richardson. So you're sitting at 105, you're looking at your options, man. You can take a running back one, wide receiver one, you can trade back, you could take Will Levis, your your favorite player. What are you doing at 105? It goes three quarterbacks and then Bijan. 
I mean, I'm probably taking Gibbs. Um, obviously, I've tried to trade with everyone in my league, right? Because I, I've tried to do the old, hey, I'll give you the 105, you give me a 109 and a second. I'll give you the 105, you give me a 111 and a first next year, and I'll give you a second this year. But more than likely, I'm probably going to lean Gibbs. We've talked about Quentin Johnston uh, before. I'm still very afraid of him. Uh, time will change that, though, once he gets draft capital in the first round in the top 15. I'll like him a lot better than I do now. If Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, ends up getting drafted in the top 20, uh, I'm sure that my eyes will turn towards him. Same with Jordan Addison. Likely, I'm likely going to go Gibbs because just guessing on how my rosters are constructed, I probably need a running back. And he happens to be the best player available in this spot. Or at least it's a tie. So I'll lean the need um, based on the tie of the, the players. Scott, in, in this instance, who would you go at 105? It's definitely not Levis. As much as I wish it was, it's just hard to draft him at this spot, knowing the market sentiment on him as soon as you put him on your team. It's going to be, all right, good luck with that. Good luck with the next Zach Wilson. Good luck with the next Josh Rosen. You know, the, the market is going to go, eh, you can hold him. It's all your risk. You know, you, you get C.J. Stroud and you put him on the trade block right away, and you're like, people would want him. Will Levis, you put him on the trade block. Sorry, Scott, you wasted that 105. So it can't be Levis. You know, you know who will come to you? The Kirk <laughs> Cousins owner. And he'll be like, Can I get young what I hope to turn that could turn out to be Kirk Cousins one day? Yeah, I mean, there's there's people that will want him, but they'll be going, Man, I wouldn't have taken him till the 110. No. I wouldn't yeah. take him till the 111. You know, hey, can I get a 24 first for Will Levis? And there will be 75% of the league that go, now nah, I'm good. And that's the 105, you know what I mean? That that and that's where you, why I don't want to take him cuz honestly, the more and more I look at it, I don't think we're good at picking out what quarterbacks are going to be good or not in the NFL. So just to say this guy has no chance, I think is bad logic, but I can acknowledge that for the first 2 years of his career, he's going to have to do an awful lot for all the detractors to say, "Man, I need to go get him." Dude, he was so good as a rookie. I need to go get him. It's going to be two years before people are believing in that. So I don't want to draft myself into that. So he's out. I think at this point, if Gibbs gets draft capital and you can just project his landing spot to be a place where they're going to use him how you want, and it doesn't have to be 20 touches a game. Give me 13 touches a game, but 40% of those are targets, and it's an offense that actually can score. Score. I'm, I'm good taking him here. You know what he is. He's going to have to be kind of a unicorn profile, and you're still betting on efficiency, but... I, I don't see where he doesn't end up being DeAndre Swift, the same type of thing. And DeAndre Swift has been good. He just hasn't been like the consensus 102, 103 in a rookie draft. So people are pissed and they think he stinks. So like that's kind of the floor, I think, for for Gibbs. So I think you could argue taking him there if your roster construction still says, man, I can use a running back like this. And maybe he has a higher ceiling than that. He's certainly going to get draft capital enough to where people aren't just going to say, oh, well, he's a platoon running back. He's a rich man's version of Kenneth Gainwell. Like you got to figure he's going to get chances to do more uh, than what you think his ceiling could be. So I think I would go Gibbs too if I had to pick, but I also do think there's appeal of a wide receiver one is probably going to emerge. Maybe I don't think it's the wide receiver one, but I do think the market is going to end up putting somebody at wide receiver one. And by the time you see the draft play out, if one of the big three that people already love gets really high draft capital, there it is. That's probably the value play because we've talked about it with the prior picks. If you draft Gibbs, there are going to be people in your league that go too small and I don't really like running backs. So he isn't necessarily the asset. He's more of a, I'm going to use him asset because it fits my roster construction versus he's a flip asset. Yep. And I think if he hits what you want him to hit, Let's say he becomes the next Alvin Kamara. And I don't even think that's a good comp because Alvin Kamara, people don't realize he was like 215 pounds. Yeah. That's yeah, not Gibbs. Right. Let's, I mean, I think Aaron Jones is a better comp, but Gibbs is probably faster, more explosive, better receiver than Aaron Jones, uh, but never had the workload that Aaron Jones did. So let's just say he becomes Aaron Jones. If he does, I don't want to trade him. So that's the thing. It's like he, no. he's going to be hard to move as an asset unless he hits like the Aaron Jones level ceiling, but with pedigree. Because Aaron Jones, I mean, if he would have had second round draft capital, people would be losing their minds because he had two top five seasons in his first four years. And that, I mean, that's on track with what you would hope Gibbs would be. I mean, part so, of part of part of the Aaron Jones thing, though, part of what made him so hard to move is, like you said, you're talking about draft pedigree, draft capital. Aaron Jones, exactly. Went to, what, UTEP, Utah, 
Utah. And he's a fifth round pick somewhere. Yeah. Somewhere in the fifth. Like he follows me on Twitter. Right. Um, and the reason he follows me on Twitter is because I was at this little shitty website, uh, fantasy football website. And this dude had like no real aspirations. Like he knew he was going to get drafted, but it was going to be like fifth, sixth, seventh round. So he would talk to anyone and he talked to our site and followed me back. He just severely outplayed his draft capital. So you couldn't for those first two years of Aaron Jones, when he was productive, he had that label to him that people like you put on uh, late round running backs, you know, not me. I love them. Um, but late round running backs where you're like, oh, well, they can get ethered at any moment. Well, it's true. They can. That's not going to happen to Jameer Gibbs. Jameer Gibbs comes out and has a competent season. I think his, his trade value will be much, much higher than Aaron Jones ever was. The only pushback I would say is look at the current market value on Ken Walker and Travis Etienne. It's not all what it cracked up to be. In fact, if you have one of those guys, if I have one of those guys on a team, I'm probably already set up for them to have a specific role on my team. I'm not probably looking at to trade them for what somebody would offer me. Like you can't just go take Ken Walker and turn him into Garrett Wilson. You get laughed at, mm. you know, like you want to move them because maybe you have too many running backs and it's almost like you have to force yourself into the trade to do it. So I think running backs are just, just me kind of playing the market. I think running backs are becoming more of a commodity when you need them, even a better commodity to draft when they fit your roster construction. Like how awesome would it be if you desperately need a running back and Jameer Gibbs is there at 105 or 106 and he becomes good. Like that is a home run pick for your That's roster, cool. but it isn't a pick of, I expect to draft him. And in 10 months, I'm holding a blue chip asset that everybody wants. I think we all know the, whatever the wide receiver is that hits and hits the Chris Olave Drake London level as a rookie, that's going to be the asset you want yeah. next year. Yeah. But that's the point. That's why we picked a running back because we're going, it could be four guys. We don't know who it is right now. Yeah. But if I could tell you which one it was, and to the point, if you could trade this pick with the scenario Clay laid out, Bijan and three quarterbacks, if you could trade that for Chris Olave, Drake London, or Garrett Wilson, you would do it, right? Oh, yeah. Because you're essentially removing the risk of trying to pick who next year's version of that is or Jameer Gibbs. So I think that that's how I would break it down. And to answer your question, I I would take Gibbs simply because I my roster probably needs it. But man, can I unload that pick and get one of those pieces that I'm talking about? This is probably the flexion point where there's still some trade value because you might be dealing with a team that goes, dude, I need a running back. Bad. I'll give you that pick, one of those guys. for. I'll give you Drake London for Gibbs. But you move a, a couple picks later, that option is gone. Can't trade the pick. Now you're forced to just pick a receiver. All right, so I'm going to get into some trade back options. But in the meantime, would you look down? Make sure you hit that little thumbs up button if you're enjoying this content. Easiest way to help out the channel. Appreciate that. So would you rather have the 105 or the 108 and 203. Oh, I can get two running backs now. You can probably get a receiver inside the top three, right? Still. And another extra running back. I'm okay with it. I'm okay taking the two picks. Well, I want the two picks because I'm going to be taking a shot on two running backs there. And I don't know, and this is no slander to Jameer Gibbs, but it, I don't know, is the running back four in this class going to be much worse than the running back two in this class? I don't know. I think they're in the same realm, same universe. It's not like the difference from Bijan to uh, Gibbs. Is that conversation changed if Richardson is still on the board at five? Well, that, yeah, because I'm drafting Richardson. I'm going upside yeah. here. Well, that, that scenario makes it interesting because we both took the package if it was the Bijan three quarterbacks and we're at 105. But as soon as we go, well, Richardson hasn't been taken yet. Now we probably view that 105 a little differently, right? I think Clay probably even views that 105 differently. So does that feel like a deal you sure. don't want to make without knowing right now? You almost want to wait. And if you wait, is it too late to get that trade? Because the market could die at that point and people go, I don't want that damn 105. I'm fine at no. 108. Market's going to pick up again. Look, we go through this every year. Every year, even a bad class, and this isn't even a bad class. Every year we go through this little like, oh my God, there's three good players. And then I don't know who to pick and everyone gets all panicked and shit. And then every year uh, the draft comes around and everybody wants to take the picks from me. Like it's the, the best thing they've ever seen. Like it's crack cocaine and I, and I have it for them and they want a good hit. Of it. No matter what, they're going to want the 105. There's a reason I've still been stacking picks. Uh, I've been making trades today where I'm getting even late round first just because I'm still going to stack them because I know they're going to have value. If you had the 105, would you be desperately trying to do something or would you be fine being patient with it? 
I would say I'd probably either be trying to move up two spots or even one, but more likely two spots because I want a little control over what quarterback I get or trading back or the third option, obviously, is just sending out uh, offers to see what I could get for that 105. It's likely not going to be the highest end of players that I want with the 105 by itself, but can I use that and a, a later pick to see if I can move on to something that I really want? I kind of feel that if you have the 105, you're a little safer than what we're projecting because I just don't know how many leagues it's going to go Bijan and three quarterbacks. So if you give yourself one mulligan spot, probably the 106, which maybe we'll do a video on the 106. Stay tuned. 106 is probably that pick where if you can get out of it now without dealing with this, you know, what do I do in this range? I think the 106 is the one you definitely want to try to get out of early. Whereas the 105, it's like all you need is one non quarterback to go. And if you're yeah. truly okay with Stroud, Bryce Young, Anthony Richardson, you're protected. You're safe. You're within that tier. Very good chance you're at the end of the tier. You're sitting with the third quarterback in your pocket if you want it. Whereas 106, 107, if you're looking quarterback, it feels like you have to make a move. Either get out or move up. But I think 105, I would just kind of sit and not trade it now. But there is the risk. Once we see everything happen on the clock, someone goes, yeah, I was hoping for a quarterback. I would have traded up in March, but it went Bijan three quarterbacks. I'm good. I'm not getting a quarterback now. I'll just wait at 108. I'll take Levis or I'll just take best player available, but I'm not trading up. There's no point. Here's the thing about 105 too, right? I've been keeping an eye on the mock drafts right now. Um, Quentin Johnson's going off the board at 12 overall to the Texans, which will have either uh, CJ Stroud or Bryce Young under center, which will make him even more attractive from the 105 there go epso facto more attractive. You don't have to be in a rush. I would definitely not be looking to a place where I'm taking any offer that's set to me. Let's say the board is completely wiped clean and we're just looking in a vacuum here. Let's use that 108 and 203, but let's make it a shallow 1QB league. So would you rather have the 105 or the 108 and the 203? And we're talking a 10-team 1QB start eight. I'm just going to hold on to the 105. Yeah, just basic math. Give me the higher pick. So in a shallow 1QB, what would it take for you to move back from the 105 to the 106? How about the 105 or the 106 and 112? Uh, 106 and 112. It's right there. It's right there. Are you, you what are you banking on? Are you banking on just variants going your way, Shane? Someone I'm, makes I'm, a mistake or you just don't care? I'm banking, just on a, get two players. banking on a couple of things. One, we have no idea which one of these receivers is going to be any good. There's things that we can look at based off their collegiate profile, metrics, all that good stuff, breakout age to tell us who's going to be good. Preferably JSN or not preferably with JSN. Like I, I think profile wise is probably the best one, but Zay Flowers is probably going to be sitting there too, right? And he's going to be a guy that gets drafted before maybe JSN and maybe Jordan Addison in this draft. Zach Charbonnet could be there. Ever running back four could be there too. All these guys are in a bag. Just pick one out. You're giving me a 112, take a free shot in another pick. I'm going to do it. Hopefully I could actually move to 112 and something else for 24 first. It might be difficult, but even if I can't, I'll take two shots at the grab bag instead of the one. So let's talk about getting up to uh, Bijan Robinson from the 105. So let's switch back to Superflex, 12-team Superflex, PPR, start 10. Would you give the 105, 107, and 203 to get up to the 101? Yeah, I think in, in a start 10, you can justify doing that. Start 11 is where it gets like a little shaky, but I think I still go with the, the Bijan pick. Mute. Oh, yeah, I got cops going by and stuff. Uh, what was the offer? Right back. <laughs> I knew that was good. I am going to take Bijan, but I'll say this. Based on the offers that I've seen for 101, uh, they're not going to get much better than this, as of right now at least. Maybe it'll increase as the draft comes up. But if you're hoping someone's going to bail you out and like give you like the 102, the 103, and a 24 first, I don't think that's happening. This might be one of the, the best types of offers that you're going to receive. That said, I still want to hold Bijan, but I, I could understand taking this deal, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in a position where you're not ready for Bijan and you go, I know for a fact, Anthony Richardson's going to fall to 105 because Scott's not in this league. Um, so I'm going to get Anthony Richardson at 105 and then I'll get a uh, Quentin Johnson at 107 or whoever, Jordan Addison, mm -hmm. to help this roster out. And I can combine that second and move back into the first. 
and I can turn Bijan basically in the three first for a team that really needs it, I could see doing this package. I wouldn't feel great about it, and my work wouldn't be done. I couldn't just take this package and go, all right, I'm done, but I'm still going to lean Bijan. Okay, so let's say your wide receiver room is C.D. Lamb, T. Higgins, Garrett Wilson, Hollywood Brown. You've got an embarrassment of riches at wide receiver. Would you give T. Higgins in the 105 for the 101? That's a step up from what Shane just mentioned. That's probably 103, 104 equivalent and the 105 for Bijan. Honestly, no, I probably wouldn't. Yeah. And that's just how I play. That That's 95% of rosters. I'm going to look at it and go, how can I try to address, even if I have a massive need at running back, how do I address it cheaper? Or how do I bank that there's going to be another window on Bijan at some point where I can pay this same type of price? So I don't think I can do it. Nope. I'm giving up T. Higgins in the 105 for the 101. Yes. Correct. Let me ask you this, Scott. Would you give up the 105 and T. Higgins for Justin Jefferson? Yes. Yes, I'll do this deal. I'll do this deal. Obviously, it's a short-term evaluation. Bijan's a running back. At our best hope, I don't think we can foresee anything longer than what, five years out of him. But we could get three Christian McCaffrey-type seasons out of him. Yeah, I'll do this. And I love T. Higgins. Now, if you tear that up just a little bit at the wide receiver, you turn the dial up to 11, uh, I might have a difficult time saying accept. But I can live with T. Higgins, Jalen Waddle, 105, you know, that range of wide receiver in the 105. Let's say it's a shallow 1QB, so 10-team, 1QB, start 8. Would you give the 105, 107, and 109 for the 101? Yeah, start 8. I'd include... Yes. Shane, Shane's spirit as well. Yes, my soul. You have my soul. What's left of it? It's all yours. Well, that's not really going to move the needle. So no. it's 24 well, versus. There's well. no kidneys left. So yeah. that's out. Kidneys gone. Maybe a little, like a 20% of a liver. Uh, that liver, that liver. You need your liver. It's not looking good. I, w- I, I would definitely stay away from the lings, lings, lungs. What about your livers. lungs? Yeah. I would stay away from my, my lungs, esophagus, uh, <laughs> liver, and hard life. Bro. Uh, but yeah, I give up those three picks all day for the 101 and a start eight. Okay, so with this 105, do we need do we need Anthony Richardson or Zach Charbonnet, some somebody else to really jump up into this level to almost kind of save the first round of 2023? Like if Richardson doesn't get draft capital and you know Charbonnet doesn't, you know, jump up ahead into this mix, is the 23 first round in trouble? I'll give the 30 second answer. The answer is no, because there's going to be plenty of players that get drafted in ranges where you say they are worth a first round dynasty pick. There's going to be more than 12 of them could be 15, 16 of them. What you're speaking to is do we need a couple of these guys to either get draft capital landing spot, combine testing, some combo of the three to where if you're holding the one Oh four, the one Oh five, the one Oh six, the tier extends that far out. To it being, holy shit, I need to get that guy. Right Right. now, there's only a couple, holy shit, I need to get that guy. Arguably, there might only be one or two. We need it to be five or six. Because once you do that, then all the other picks are still going to be strong. We're still going to be able to go, oh, Josh Downs went in the first round. Zay Flowers went in the first round. Jalen Hyatt went in the first round. Will Levis went in the first round. Look at these running backs. They went early round three, late round two. Like There's going to be a lot of that. Michael Mayer went in the first round. How many of them are going to be... Dude, if I'm on the clock when that guy's on the board, he's part of that big six, seven, eight player tier that I have to get. I have to get Quentin Johnston. I have to get Jameer Gibbs. Not I'll take them because they got good draft capital and they have a decent profile, but I have to get them. And I think that's what we're lacking with these yep. mid picks right now. I mean, we've got four quarterbacks that are going, going to go in the first 10 picks of the draft, uh, likely. Then we've got, I don't know, four or five wide receivers that are going to get drafted in the first round. Historically, first round wide receivers hit. We're going to have one running back in the first round, which is unheard of. And then we're going to have a tight end in the first round. So if you get the 105 and you're like, I don't know what to do, you kind of suck at this game. If you, if the worst thing you have to do is make a pick, then you should shut up and stop complaining because you're still going to get a player with either first round draft capital or in B. John Robinson's case, or Jameer Gibbs' case, more likely, someone that's got day two, like early day two capital. And if somehow B. John falls in the second round, which will likely won't happen. So 105 is still a good spot. 